Good morning, everybody. Thank you for attending the Tuesday morning classroom session for shortcuts. My name is Noah, and this morning we're going to be looking at the basics for Spotlight. So hopefully uh, you're already using online services through shortcuts, and if you're not currently sending out surveys to your customers, this is a great way to not only find out how your staff is doing, how your business is doing, but also to capture and retain customers. So we're going to look at how to set up Spotlight and how to use Spotlight and exactly what are the advantages of sending surveys and using Spotlight for your business. So let's get started. We're going to jump into the presentation. So similar to our other classroom sessions, we are recording this presentation. It's about 30 minutes. We're going to allow some time for questions at the end. So if you have to drop out early, don't worry, we will record this and send everybody a link to the recording a little bit later today. Hopefully you can hear me. And if you can't, on the right side of your screen, not that you can, uh, but there's going to be a question. So if you have a question, let me know. If you're having audio problems, let me know. Um, and of course, if you have any questions after the presentation, so if you leave early or you join uh, late, or if you're watching this video after the fact, you can always reach out to us on our emails, on our main lines, and you can also reach us on our social media. So we will respond to you on Facebook or on Instagram. So just visit us on Shortcuts USA. So let's talk a little bit about Spotlight. What are we going to learn today? Well, first we need to learn how to configure Spotlight. Exactly where do the surveys go? Where can you share the surveys? How do you respond to surveys? So we're going to learn when the customers give you feedback and you decide you want to share that, how do you set it up so that you can share it on your Facebook page, for example? And even how you can share your Spotlight surveys on your company web pages. How to set up the survey frequency. So, of course, some salons, some spas, or some barbershops may decide that they want to send a survey to their customers after each visit. Or you may decide, maybe I only want to send my customers one survey every year. You absolutely can change the frequency. And then once those surveys are going out, how do you access them? How do you engage with your customers? How do you share the survey results, especially if you start getting really glowing reviews? So we're going to talk about handling that. So first things first, where exactly are the surveys hosted? How do you set all of that up? Hopefully, most everybody that's listening to this presentation is already familiar with the Shortcuts console. And if you're not, if you haven't sat in through the online booking classroom session or our previous sessions, be sure to catch up on one of our other on one of our other video presentations. So a quick recap. In the online console, this is a web page where you would go to to give your staff permission so that they, they can look at their appointments online. This is the place that you would go to to set up online bookings. And if you have Spotlight, this is where you go to look at your surveys, to read the responses, and to actually see how your business is trending. Now, the nice thing about Spotlight is that it doesn't just send out surveys. It actually shows you what are your averages, what are your responses. So how do you actually rank against yourself from month to month? And how do you even compare against yourself from year to year? And then not only are you looking at how you're trending, Spotlight will actually show you how are your surveys, how are your customer responses ranked when you're looking against the industry average. So are you above, below, or exactly at the industry average when it comes to customer responses? So in a moment, we're gonna talk about the actual questions themselves and how you can start to read these screens. So if you're not already familiar with Spotlight, if you're not using the console, or if you didn't have Spotlight previously because you have a very old version of Shortcuts, you may want to contact your customer care rep because they're going to help you upgrade your shortcuts and make sure you're taking advantage of all of the new online services that we have. So do keep that in mind. If you've never used Spotlight before, you log into the console and it says you do not have this module, you do not have this feature, chances are 
you probably have to get an upgrade of some sort. Okay, <clears throat> so let's go ahead. There we go. And go to the next slide. So if you do have Spotlight and you would like to share the surveys on your Facebook page, where exactly do you configure that? If you go to the online console, and I will demonstrate, I'll do a live demonstration in a moment, you're actually going to go to your Book Me settings. And as you scroll through your settings, normally it controls things like when can a customer make an appointment? How many days in advance can a customer make an appointment? About halfway down the list of options, there's going to be something that says Facebook main page. And when you press choose, this feature is not designed to add online booking to Facebook. You would instead go directly to Facebook to do that. Instead, what this link does is it gives shortcuts permission to post survey results that you approve on your Facebook company page. So if you've never set it up, and of course you want to share the good news from all of your customers, go into your console, go to your book me settings, and choose your Facebook page. And you're going to tell shortcuts, I'm going to allow shortcuts to post these survey results, and I'm going to give permission for shortcuts to contact the customers or manage this, this permission. So let's actually look on the online console. Where are you going to go to begin setting this up? So we'll go onto the web page. So most of you should hopefully be familiar with this page. Company settings controls the instructions that customers see when they go to your online booking page. Site settings controls the contact information for your particular store. Book me settings is where you tell shortcuts. If I have a survey and I'd like to share it on Facebook, this is the button where we configure it. So you'll scroll down through the list and here is where you would choose which Facebook page you want to share your surveys to. So if you haven't done this yet, go ahead and log in and make this change right now. And then after you're done, I'm going to go back to the top of the page and go back to the start, the main menu. So Spotlight. For most of you, it appears on the top left corner. This is where your, your actual survey results are going to go. So depending on the number of locations you have, you may only have one NPS title, that's Net Promoter Score tile, or multiple. Now NPS, this is an average of all of the surveys you've gotten back. You may have 100, you may have 99%, you may have 80%. So it's just an average and it's gonna change from month to month. So don't get hung up if the very first time you use Spotlight, you're at 95 or 96%, and you wanna get to that elusive 100%. Give it time, review the responses, and eventually this score will change. Now, if you were to press the tile, either the green or the blue tile here, it's the same thing as pressing the review button on the right side. Now I'm not going to press it just yet. At the bottom of this particular screen, this is actually where you're going to see from month to month, how are you stacking up in the basic net promoter score? And then of the scores you've received, how are you stacking up against the industry averages? Now the survey, when it comes to ranking, there's three major categories you have to keep in mind. The survey is written on a 10 point scale with 10 being the best. The people that score you nines and tens, these are considered promoters. So these are the people that jump on their social media, jump online, tell their friends, hey, I really like going to this, this salon, this spa, you should check them out. So they're doing the advertising for you. The people that score you the sevens and the eights, these are actually considered passives. So these are people that are maybe new in town, they're trying out different stores, different barber shops, different locations, so they haven't settled on a favorite. So this is just one of the places, they gave you an okay score, but they're still trying other places out, so that's fine. 
the ones that score you six or below in any category, historically, these are called detractors. So these are the ones that are going to jump on social media. They're going to jump on Yelp. They're going to jump on Facebook. And they're going to say, I didn't like going here. They were terrible. They treated me terrible. So they're sabotaging your business. They're turning customers away from you. So those are called detractors. And in a moment, I'll actually show you how to deal with detractors if you ever get a low score on your survey. Now, the questions themselves, this is something that we often get asked. Can I see the questions? Can I change the questions? Well, we can always send you a support document that has a screenshot of what do the questions look like? How are they formatted? But the basic questions are in six particular categories. So it's a very short survey. And the questions are written in very general terms. The reason that we have these six basic questions, regardless of whether you're a salon, a spa, a barbershop, or any other business that's dealing with customers, is because we actually got feedback from Fred Reichelt. He was the author of a book called The Ultimate Question 2.0. And he taught us these are the six questions you can ask any customer that's going to give you the maximum response. So that's why they're written very specifically. And they're in these categories. So, of course, the overall impression that the customer has from your business what did they think of the cleanliness and the friendliness of the environment? What did they think about the care they received? If, what did they think about any professional advice or the quality of the service they received? And of course, the big question, would they recommend your business to a friend or family member? And was this a good value for their money? So those six questions are guaranteed to give you maximum responses compared to any other questions we could ask. Plus, since it's a very short survey, customers are almost always guaranteed to fill it out and submit their answers. So once you actually get a survey, what are you supposed to do with it? How do you read the information? How do you share the information? So let's jump back to the presentation for a moment. So there's a few buttons that you should be comfortable with once you're in Spotlight. So the first thing you'll do is you'll actually set the frequency for all your surveys. So in Spotlight, you're going to go to Settings, and you're going to choose the frequency. Now, by default, once Spotlight is enabled, it will actually send a survey to your customers after their very first visit. But then you want to ask yourself, OK, after their first survey, when should the follow-up survey be? Should it be every visit? Should it be once a month, once every three months, twice a year, once a year? So you're going to choose what makes the most sense for your business. Now, currently, based on all of the customers that I've been working with, the most popular response is to send a survey every three months or so. So at least you have a sense as to quarterly how your staff is doing. So that's the first thing. Choose your frequency. Then if you have a web page and if you start to get really glowing reviews and you want to share them on your web page, you can actually generate a website plugin. And you can say, OK, I'd like to share one or two or three surveys at a time and display it on my web page. So you can generate a code and you can get it to your web team. Or if you're creating your own web pages, you can just plug this in. It's a little JavaScript. So those are the things you want to set. And in a moment, we'll do a live demo. So once you start getting those survey responses, how can you promote them? How is this going to help your business? So when you press the Reviews button, you actually get a window that shows you what the customer responses were. And if the customer left a message, left a comment, there's a few things you can do. You can flag the review, so maybe you're going to circle back to this later. Maybe later today or at the end of the week, you're just going to go back and read these responses. You can publish it on your web page. So if you're using the web plugin, every time you press publish on your website, that particular survey, those responses, will now appear on your website. 
you can also choose to share it on your Facebook page. So you can do both. Share a really nice review on your own company page and on Facebook. So you always have a chance to flag these, look at these later, or take no action. And Shortcuts will actually populate these surveys on what's called My Local Salon. Now we'll look at My Local Salon in just a moment. But if customers are taking the time to actually leave you a comment to say, hey, I really love coming here. They're my favorite salon. I've been coming here for years. And you decide, hey, this is one of my favorite customers. I'd like to say something nice in return. You actually have the ability to leave a public comment. So when the survey gets published, whether it's on your company page or on my local salon, it'll show what the customer said. And then immediately underneath it, it'll also say what the salon said. So you can say, hi, I'm the manager or I'm the stylist at this particular salon. And this is one of my favorite clients. I really love having them come in. So your comment will appear next to their comment. Now, of course, every now and then we get customers that are upset with the service or their visit for some particular reason. If that ever happens, if you get a low score on the survey, then you actually have the ability to send a one-time private message to the customer where you would say, this is my name, this is my number, this is my email. Please contact me. I'm the manager. I'm the owner of this salon. I'd like to talk about what happened, and I'd like to fix it for your next visit. So doing that, believe it or not, actually makes the customer reconsider their score, and it allows them to change it. Now, if the customer ignores it, they don't contact you, they just stand by their words, they were not happy, and they give you a really bad score, you do have the ability to remove those negative surveys so that it doesn't really throw off your averages. Now, the warning is you can only remove three surveys every six months. So your first course of action, actually contacting, actually reaching out to the client, increases the chances that they're going to change their score and, and really not affect your average because they realize you're an actual local business. You care about your customers. Maybe they were having a bad day. Maybe there was a miscommunication. Maybe they're blowing this out of proportion. So this is your chance to reset it and start over. So save those removals for the customers that just won't budge, won't contact you. So let's actually look in shortcuts how to do these things. So we're going to go back to the console and we're going to go to our reviews. So any ones where the customers left a message, I would go in here, I would read what the customer had to say. And if I want, right away, I can share it on Facebook. So this score will appear on Facebook. And when the customer clicks on that score, it'll actually take them to your online booking page so that they can make an appointment. If you go to the details, so this is where you have the ability to publish a public comment or to send a private comment. And of course, you can always leave a note. So maybe you also have your manager taking a look at these surveys. So maybe you want to leave a note. You can say, uh, Angel, let's talk about this customer. Maybe let's um, say something nice and publish a public comment. But let's put our heads together on what we want to say. So I can put a note in here, save it, and return to it later. And of course, at the bottom, you do have the ability to remove this. So you have a number of options, including publish on your website. So let's go back to Spotlight. So when it comes to adjusting the frequency, that would be on the right side. You'd go into the settings column. And this is where you choose the frequency. So remember, by default, a customer gets one survey on their very first visit with you. But when should their follow-up survey be? The most popular response I've gotten so far is every three months, so that you have a quarterly snapshot of how your staff is doing. And then when you send surveys, are you going to send email surveys only or email and SMS, depending on the preference of the customer? 
Well, emails are free. Most customers don't mind that. So I can set it to email only. Now, shortcuts for every survey that you send out, you actually have three potential emails that you're going to get. The first one may be overkill. So this is a daily notification. So at the end of each day, Shortcuts will email you and it'll say, today I sent out 12 surveys, three customers responded. Okay, that's nice. But at the end of the year, you're dealing with thousands of emails. So maybe you don't want to get a daily notification. So you can uncheck that. The other two are a little more important. At the bottom of the survey, there's a little checkbox that says, I would like to talk to somebody from the salon. So there's a contact notification. Now, this doesn't mean the customer necessarily has a complaint. So the contact is just, I am a customer and I'd like to find out, do you guys carry Redken or, or do you plan on carrying Redken in the future? Or uh, I really like this certain product or I like this certain employee, but I noticed that they're, they've been out for a few weeks. Did they change their schedule? So they just want to talk to you. So of course, if a customer wants to be contacted, you should know about it. The third email that you could potentially get from your spotlight is actually the detractor notification. So remember I talked about that 10 point scale, the nines and the tens are promoters, the sevens and the eights are the passives. So the sixes and below, these are the people that are going to complain the loudest on Yelp, on social media. So if anybody scores you six or below in any category, this is your first plan of action. You're gonna get an email and you're going to notice that this customer gave you a bad score. And that's your first opportunity to right away send that private message, send your email, send your phone number, and say, you know, let's talk about what happened and let's try to fix it for your next visit. And right away, that's going to increase the odds that they're going to change their score. Now, somebody has a question. Uh, before I look at the question, let me get to the bottom of this window. So at the bottom, this is where the emails go to when the customer or when shortcuts needs to contact you regarding the surveys the clients have no idea where the survey goes to or when they want to be contacted where the email goes to this is only for you if you actually have a manager that you work with or somebody that's helping handle your social media doing your reviews things like that you can always put your email there and if you use a semicolon you can always put a secondary email there Okay, now let me go over to the question. Somebody has a question right now. Stand by. Okay, David has a question. On my Facebook share, it's displaying in German. How can I change that and set it in English? That is very curious. All right, let's take a look at some settings. So hold on, uh, David. In German, that's very interesting. So we're going back to the main screen. And this is the main console screen. So from here, the button that usually handles the language is company settings. And if we scroll down, this corresponds to online booking. The default supported language should be right here. And of course, you should have it set to, to English. So double check that in case somehow this accidentally got switched. Any supporting languages would be listed underneath it. So you can enable or disable any secondary language. So just double check that because these are the two settings in the console that reflect on the languages. There is, if I scroll back up, there is no spotlight setting per se that has the same thing. You know, send the surveys in German or, or whatever. So none of these options on the right here allow you to change what language that's in or what the responses are in. So double check that. And if you have everything set to English, you might want to go into your Facebook settings. There may be something in your Facebook configuration that changed what your default posting language is. So just double check that because that's a very curious error that you're getting. That's a very good question, David. We might want to look into that. So settings controls the frequency, allows you to set, okay, how many email notifications would I like to get? 
and should anybody else get CC'd on them. So I'll say email only once every three months, save my changes. Don't forget to save your changes. So back to Spotlight. Now my website plugin, if you have your own company webpage and you'd like to share your Spotlight surveys, especially the ones where the customers give you glowing responses, this is where you create your website code. So by default, Shortcuts will display three surveys that you've personally approved out of 20 total. So Shortcuts will cycle through all of these survey responses that you've approved out of the 20 that you've approved. And then it'll wait 10 seconds in between each one. So how does it actually show up on your company page. I'm going to press the generate button on the right side, and this is the code that you need to put on your web page. So what would it actually look like on a company page? So I'm going to use our friend Freddie B. So we've used him before as a demonstration. So Freddie has his own spa page, his own company page, and he posts his survey responses on his team page. So up at the top, I'm going to click on his team link. And of course, the reason that Freddie chooses this page instead of the main page is because most of the surveys that the customer that the customers leave mention a specific employee. So in this case, somebody says, I really love Christine C. She's excellent. So now a customer can go through the list and say, oh, there's Christine C. That's who they're talking about. So they can visit their particular social media pages or just reach out to them. So they put a name with a face. So that's why Freddie chose this page. But on the right side, if you notice, it's going to have what the customer posted, their little star, their little ratings review, and even the name and a date. And did you notice how it just scrolled to the next review? So every 10 seconds, these surveys are going to automatically scroll to the next one. So Freddie, if you notice, he doesn't have it set to what the defaults are. The defaults are display three surveys at a time out of 20 that I've approved. So Freddie changed the settings. He actually changed it to, and you can actually do this for yourself. He actually set it to display about nine or 10 reviews out of 40 that he's personally approved and he's still going to wait 10 seconds in between each one. So if I press the generate button, my code has been updated to instead of displaying three, to display nine. So you get to choose. If your web page has very tight tolerances and you really only have enough space to post one survey at a time, but you'd still like it to scroll, you can absolutely do that. Say, I only want to display one survey at a time out of the last 20 that I've approved, and wait five seconds in between each one. Then I can hit generate, and this is the code I would put on my web page. So if you're not currently using Spotlight or sharing your surveys on either Facebook or your company web page, you're missing out on a very important tool that's going to help your visibility on search engines. So we're going to put a pin in that for just a moment. Because every customer that uses Spotlight through shortcuts also has the ability to have what's called a My Local Salon directory listing. So if you've ever done a Google search, a Yahoo search, a Bing search, and you've just searched for general services, let's say I'm looking for somebody that does brake repair, I'm looking for somebody that does tire repair, and in a particular city or zip code, then Google or the other search engines, they're going to return shops that are in my area that have reviews, that are open for business, things like that. So right away, some of these are even sponsor results. So what My Local Salon does is it helps those Google bots that are searching for businesses. It helps Bing, it helps all the companies that are constantly searching for new businesses, looking for reviews, looking for updates, find those locations. So let's say I were to jump on a web page, I do a Google search, and I'm looking for somebody that does kids' haircuts in a certain city or zip code. So my local salon is a directory listing of all the salons that have shortcuts that offer those services. 
if a customer actually manages to get to this page, they can read a description of what is this, what makes this salon unique? What's the address? Can I book now? Yes, you can do all of that right from this page. So if I scroll through, and I think on the next page, I'm actually going to find the Freddie B Salon. There he is. So why does Freddie have two different pages? He has his own company page, of course, but he also created his own directory listing in the Shortcuts Online Console. And from the main page, this is on the right side, my local salon. So the reason he actually shows up in two places is to help his visibility online. The more places Freddie's name shows up, Freddie's contact information, his online booking, his address, his phone number, the more places those show up online, the easier it is for the search engines to find him. And more important than that, because my local salon automatically posts the surveys that you send out every two weeks, and that's here on the bottom. So Freddie doesn't have to necessarily approve each and every one. They will automatically post here. And since 99.9% .9 of all of his surveys give him a 10 star rating, then he's absolutely comfortable with just letting these post automatically. So since those are constantly posting, then every time the online search engines, the companies like Google are looking for businesses, it'll keep noticing, hey, this Freddie B page, this Freddie B site keeps getting survey responses. They keep posting survey responses. They keep updating their information. So I'm going to start recommending them more frequently to customers that are looking for salons that do ladies cuts or men's cuts or children's cuts or blow dry services. So regardless of what city you're in, if you just jump on Google and you say, I'm looking for somebody that does extensions. And if you happen to live in Freddy's neck of the woods, then Google is going to say, check out the Freddy B salon. He's got like a million reviews. He does these services. He features these products. So this is why Spotlight helps your search engine optimization. So even if you never put and you never share the surveys on your company webpage, then you absolutely want to make sure that you at least set up your My Local Salon page. Because as this information keeps getting updated, it'll increase your visibility. Right? So that that is why Spotlight is super, super important. Okay. So let's jump back. So now that you know how to configure the surveys, now that you know how to respond to the surveys, if you're not taking advantage of this, then you're missing out on a really great feature, something that's just going to help the business in the long run, especially getting your name out there, getting your contact information out there, making sure you show up on search engines. Okay, so keep that in mind. So we learned how to configure Spotlight, how to post it on Facebook if you want, how to set up your frequency for your surveys, how to respond to them, to your customers. So if you're not using it, if you have an old version of Shortcuts, now is the time to consider upgrading or getting Spotlight surveys altogether. So we're gonna open up the floor for questions. Of course, we post all of our webinars on our web on our shortcuts webpage you're welcome to watch our previous presentations there we also post these on our youtube channel so if you go to shortcuts usa all one word no spaces double check that and we have our complete video presentation all of the classroom sessions that we've done on tuesdays or tuesday thursdays plus all of our new product announcements so be sure to check us out on youtube Okay, so we officially open up the floor for questions. So on the right side of your screen, if you go to the question window, the little question bar, go ahead and post that message. And I hope 
David found that German setting that he had, that was very curious. But I'll give everybody a moment. You might be typing in your questions right now or just writing down notes. So I'll give you a few moments. And I don't think we have any questions right now. Okay, so if there are no questions, do absolutely look at using Spotlight. If you have the feature and you haven't used it before, you absolutely want to start using it now. If you're watching this video after the fact and you want to get more information, you can always reach out to us on our education email, education at shortcuts.net. You can always reach out to our customer success team. So if you have an old version of Shortcuts, you need to get an upgrade or you need to sign up for one of our tier packages, which includes Spotlight surveys, you can always reach out to us. So go ahead and give us a call, reach out to us on social media. And if you're watching the presentation after the fact, go ahead and reach out to us if you have any questions. So thank you all for attending. We're going to share a copy of this video a little bit later today. I appreciate you for visiting and I hope to see you on the next presentation. Have a great day.